This is my backpack, but it's kind of broken at the moment and I'm a bit intimidated to fix it. So rather than doing that, how about I just make a bigger one of these? I need a commuter bag. I'm thinking messenger bag, dangly things, the quick release strap from the war boy. I have a list of things that I want to store and some sketches of what I'm thinking. I've worked out the pattern for the main body and flap, and I have some thoughts for the different attachment options. The plan is to make a rectangular body to store my laptop. It'll have a zip top, probably not there though, somewhere for my water bottle to attach, tension straps for jacket storage, velcro across the front to mount potential pouches, and a flap. The flap will be that Dior saddlebag shape with an asymmetrical buckle and some quick access storage. I'll work almost entirely with fusible plastic bags and salvaged hardware. While my backpack's been out of commission, I've basically been using the War Boy pretty much exclusively to get all my stuff back and forth. That and a tote bag to actually carry my laptop. In that time, I've learned a few things about this bag, things that I like, things that I don't like, things that I want to fix. First being the uh, the tension straps on the bottom, they never worked on this bag, they were never secure enough and they kind of basically broke on the first five minutes. The other thing is that I didn't just use plastic bags to make this, I added some fabric for the zip assembly thinking that was going to be a good idea but really it's kind of not and the fabric gets stuck in the zip tracks, there's some raw edges that keep coming off that I have to keep trimming, it's not worth it. The, the plastic is actually a great material for a bag and, and sews really well. So I'm just going to make the new one entirely out of this material. Basically, I'm just going to scale this thing up so it can fit a laptop. Um, and to do that, I'm going to need some materials. I empty out my collection of salvaged hardware to see what I have. And I have a decent amount of webbing, heaps of zips, shoelaces, elastic, and sliders, clips, and carabiners. What I'm missing is two heavy duty quick release buckles for the shoulder strap and flap. For the plastic sheets, I pull out every plastic bag in the house. I've covered in detail how to fuse plastic bags to make sheets in a previous video, so we'll skip that part. And cut to the three large panels I made for this project. I really love this material and think it has the potential to be quite beautiful. It can also help you see exactly where all your money is going. I could now draft a pattern for the main body and I'm using my laptop sleeve to give me the basic dimensions. I make an educated guess to the depth of the bag and have the length of the flap be slightly less than the height of the body. I use some plates to shape the edge of the flap, ink it all in, add some notes and trace off a pattern for the body panels. I can now rough cut the body panels, press them flat and cut them to size. The flap was more of a challenge and took me some time to figure it out. I need three panels here. One that makes up the back of the bag. This is only sewn in on three sides, so it needs to step in to leave the seam allowance of the inside panel free to be sewn into the body of the bag. Two of the shaped ends makes the front and back of the pocket. I left a lot of excess on the ends that I can cut down while putting in the zip. I want the inside of the bag to have a pouch for my laptop. I lay out my laptop sleeve on a sheet of plastic and mark the edge. Then fold this around to figure out the depth. I straighten up the lines and cut it out. I add bias tape to the top edge for a neat finish and fold along the points of the corners and stitch to shape the pouch. I then notch the center points of the pouch and the inside panel and join them. On the other inside panel, I added a flat pouch. Cutting a panel about two thirds the height, added binding and sewed around the edge and down the center. I chose the zip for the top opening and added plastic to the sides by matching up the raw edges right sides facing and folding it back to top stitch in place. This is much wider than I need and I'll trim it to size when I get to assembly. So I've now got a bunch of stuff I'm pretty pleased with myself actually, this has gone pretty well. We're, we're ready to assemble, but except we're, we're so not ready to assemble. Like for example, this piece, this, this is going to get attached up together to make the main flap of the bag. Like this will curve over the top, do you see? I'm going to add a zip, which is fine, that, that's totally doable. The only issue is that I need to have 
the closing mechanism, the buckle, the, the, the thing that I need to close this bag over. I, I, I want another buckle like that's on the Warboy uh, because it's beautiful. Buying it off the internet feels like a cheat. I'm not supposed to buy brand new on this channel, so I'll, I'll figure something out. It'll be fine. The other issue, this is the front panel. Um, don't have enough Velcro. We'll see if I remember to do the molly webbing, but yeah, I, I, I'm going to get some Velcro. Once those two things are done, then, then I can assemble the bag, which shouldn't be too much of an issue. These are the insides, which I'm like super happy with. That's, that's my laptop pouch. And that's like my occasional storage pouches on the front. I've got my zip here. So this is the top zip. And then this is the, the bit that wraps around the body. But as you can, you can kind of hear it, it's a little bit thin. It's a little bit thin, so I might beef this up a little bit and add all the gubbins. There's a lot of gubbins. There's like clips and straps and belts and a lot of things that I could really mess up if I don't remember to do them properly. I did get some Velcro and started cutting strips and sewing them in place. I didn't remember to sew it like molly webbing. The inside and outside front panels were basted together and the excess Velcro was snipped off. I could then tackle the back. Starting with the zip pocket, I layered up all the parts. I folded back the edge of the top layer where I wanted it to stop and marked the point where it crossed the raw edge of the zip. I kept double checking this measurement before cutting it to size. I cut two scraps of plastic to cover the ends and mark where the zip would start and finish. The scraps were sewn in place and the front of the pocket was sewn in, lining up the raw edges, right sides together folded back and top stitch in place. Off camera I stitched this onto the back of the pocket, but of course I forgot to add my makeshift buckle. After unpicking, a short strip of webbing was inserted into the edge which could hold a carabiner. The other end is a D-ring on a loop of the thicker webbing. The main panel was sewn into the pocket assembly and the excess zip was removed. I could now add the inside back panel. This was basted along three edges and secured at the top with a line of straight stitch leaving the seam allowance on the top edge of the inside panel free. I strengthened the side by fusing more plastic scraps. I'm going to add clips to each end for additional attachment points. I cut some webbing, thread the clips and tack the ends together. I attached the sides to the zip assembly the same way I have throughout and attached one of the clips with another strip of webbing over the top to hide the raw edges. I then spent a lot of time walking the side assembly around the front pouch to figure out where I wanted to attach the open end. I ran the first line of stitching to join them but double checked before committing to the length with the top stitching. I can now add the second clip in the same way and trim everything to one width. The last attachments to make are the tension straps and I cut some short lengths of webbing which get a slider added and longer lengths get one end folded with a bar tack to secure. And with all the parts prepared I could lay them out. The hardest part of making a bag is the mental gymnastics involved in arranging all the parts so that when you flip them out they are in the right place. All the panels need to be wrong sides together and the gubbins need to be pointing into the bag. If you're doing something like this, just make sure you take your time here. Confident that I knew where everything should go, I ran around the edge making sure to match up any notch marks I had added, placing each accessory as I came to it. With this material, you can't really pin anything as the holes won't heal like with a regular fabric. I add multiple lines of stitching to secure each accessory and a final run of zigzag. Bias tape would have been much neater, but I'm conserving what's left of my supply. Turning it out, I'm happy that everything has gone to plan. I attached the horizontal strap to the back with a heavy box stitch and tacked on the horizontal strap before packing everything inside and jamming it through the machine. Turning it out and I have the main bag. That was a lot. I'm going to speed run through the accessories, but you have been watching for a wee while. Maybe you're even enjoying it. Maybe you could subscribe, give it a like, share it with somebody who might appreciate it. Let's get on with the rest of it. I gather up my scraps and fuse them together to make two panels. Cut them to size with a generous excess. 
Add sticky Velcro to the back and two sliders to the front to make this nifty carry strap. And join them with a side panel the same way as on the main body. For the bottle carry, I grabbed this netting that was once the lining of a jacket, marked out the circumference of the bottle and the height I wanted, and added seam allowance with a generous excess on the top edge. I traced the bottom of the bottle, added seam allowance and I can assemble. I joined the short ends of the rectangle with a straight stitch and a zigzag to secure the edge, fold back and stitch down the top edge to make a channel for some elastic. I sew on the bottom, again with a straight and a zigzag stitch. Turning it out I have a little sock that will fit my bottle. I snip a hole in the channel on the top edge and thread through the elastic, adding a toggle to secure. Finally, I cut a length of webbing, add a D-ring and add a box stitch to hold it in place before I secure the raw edge. And finally, hand stitch it on and this is the finished item. This is exactly what I was hoping for. A practical, heavy duty bag with lots of opportunity for customization as I figure out what I need this thing to do. While it looks chaotic with its multicolored panels and neon top stitch, this is what I wanted. You could be more intentional with the choice of raw materials. I allowed myself the indulgence of buying the buckle I wanted for the quick adjust strap and I cover making this arrangement in detail in the Warboy film if you're interested. The bottle carry does swing about a bit but I enjoy the aesthetic regardless of its practicality. The CBD pouch takes up less space on the front than I was expecting, leaving room for further additions which will make up for the limited capacity internally when the laptop is in place. But it does have its faults which I'll let this guy take the first stab at. I'm back from my uh, first trip out and it's, uh, it's heavy. It was heavy before I put the laptop in it, then I put the laptop in it, and it got really heavy. And then I added some shot. It, how about we look and see how we did with the storage? What's in your bag, Angelos? Tell us what's in your bag, your bag. Got my, my bottle of brew, everyday headphones, laptop, my notebook, my water bottle. I'll put some knots in the end of that. I will, I will. A CBD pouch. So we managed to get a pretty hefty stack of books in there. And we also were carrying the deviation jacket on the bottom of it as well. Having tested it out, let's give it a B plus. I spent the entire day worrying that this strap was going to fail. I spent a lot of time like reinforcing this before I took it out, but um, it's actually fine. There's no signs. There's a little bit of loose stitching at the bottom, but otherwise it's okay. In hindsight, it was actually pretty handy having to like sew the upright strap into the inside of the bag because it's going through like two layers of plastic so I'm actually fairly confident in this end. I'm not super happy with this. I probably should have just put another D clip on, on here because I think over time that this might actually just wear wear through, like this might just start chainsawing its way through here. The other thing was the, the strap. So strap on the the war boy works perfectly never had an issue with it but with the amount of weight that i've been carrying today this the quicker quick release quick adjust started to um give way it wasn't in the morning but once i picked up the big glass bottle filled up my water bottle picked up a stack of comics the bag got so heavy that the this this was like creeping it just wanted to creep don't know what to do about that don't know what to do about that um maybe need to like I think I'm happy I'm happy this seems like it's going to work it's going to do the job that I need it to do it's fun to wear I feel really good in it I like it I'm very proud of myself um maybe get back to the original show the big fault I've been trying to avoid showing you is my horrible stitching I kind of forgot how tension works on my machine you can see it too on the Hamkus hoodie but I think there's something not right with my machine and I'm going to give it a tear down and clean before my next project. So you can look forward to that film. Anyway, that was the big boy bag. 
Thank you very much for watching, it's greatly appreciated. If you are going to try this approach to making a bag, please let me know in the comments. This isn't really a tutorial video, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to offer any insights I have.